good morning. Hope you're all well. As we, uh, is this the, this the first Sunday? In, it is the first Sunday in September, isn't it? It is bright, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it, is, is, yeah. it is. Yeah. So uh, welcome to September. And the nights are drawing in, aren't they? Anyway, I digress as always. Well, way back in in March, at the um, at the outset of our pandemic journey, I, I preached on a favourite text of mine, and indeed I know it's a favourite text of, of many of you. It's taken from Philippians chapter 3, where, where Paul is encouraging the believers in Philippi to press on, to keep going. Well, I thought we would revisit that text this morning, six months into the pandemic, and as we seek the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, as we face... <laughs> what may well turn out to be another six months in a in a similar situation. We pray that it won't, but it may well be. Who knows? Nobody knows. We need inspiration, don't we? We need the wisdom of God. We need to to be spared on. Um, our lives have, have been turned upside down. And, and as I said, none of us can be certain about what lies ahead. We can, however, be certain of the truth that God wants us to press on with our faith. So if that's not happening in your life, or it hasn't been over the last six months, then maybe you need to prick up your ears a little bit more this morning and listen to what God would say to us in order to press on in the days ahead. We're going to look at five things. We're going to, Firstly, we're going to look at... Um, the first part of what I'm going to be saying is don't look back, look ahead. The second part is hold true to what you've already attained. Thirdly, do as others have done. Fourthly, focus your mind. Fifthly, and lastly, remember your identity and be ready for your king. Some key ingredients to press on with this morning. Well, Anne is going to read the text for us, and then after Anne has read the text, I'll, I'll pray. The text is Philippians 3, and we're going to be reading verses 12 to 21. Well, Anne's going to be reading it for you. Thank you, Anne. Our reading is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 21. Not that I've already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you about, tell you even now with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for each and every day that we are able to worship you in this way lord it's not as it was but lord we trust that in the months or the weeks and the months ahead that lord we would be able to gather again but if not lord would you spare us on to increase our faith regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in in in, in how we worship lord help us all to know you more, to love you more, to serve you better in the weeks ahead. So Lord, as we move into a new term, as we move into, into the autumn and the winter months, spare us on by your Spirit. Keep us going, we pray. Help us to learn 
from this text this morning we ask in Jesus name Amen well firstly then don't look back look ahead verses 13 to 14 let me read them again brothers I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. One thing I do, says Paul. In other words, this is important to me. This has to be done. This is top of my to-do list, if you like, in, in modern day terminology. I forget what lies behind me and I strain forward to what is ahead, pressing on towards the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So we used to have a, um, a golden retriever called Chester. Some of you will remember Chester. Chester would look like nothing more than, than to go for a walk. He got really excited about going for a walk. I think in lockdown, actually, we've been excited about being released to go for a walk, haven't we? Back in the day when it was really bad. Anyway, he was a good dog. And very rarely would he wander off. But if he did, I would call him. And he would come running towards me. As I said, he was a good dog. Nothing mattered more to him at that moment than responding to the call of his master. And pressing on towards his master, which was me who was calling him. As Christians, you know, nothing should be more important to us than God's calling on our lives. If God has called us, then hour by hour, day by day, we are to endeavour to respond to the calling. And this is what Paul was doing and teaching. We are, moment by moment, to fix our eyes upon Jesus, our Master. And the ultimate prize that awaits our heavenly home. It's our calling today that counts. It's, it's what we do today that matters. Yesterday, it's gone. It's, it's, it's a memory. You know, what was good or, or what was bad about yesterday is history, isn't it? It's today. Right now. Right now. This moment is important. It's important in this moment that you and I press on and we strain to go forward, forgetting what lies behind, says Paul, and straining toward what lies ahead. Do you know, Paul, when he wrote this, was imprisoned in a dark dungeon, chained to guards 24 hours a day. But even in that situation, he was pressing on in his calling as a Christian. He was pressing on in advancing the kingdom. He was pressing on in moving towards the, the, the wonderful prize of heaven. Philippians 1 verses 12 and 13. It says there, I want you, where he writes, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial God and to all the rest of my... To, and, and, and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. So keep going today, Christian. Serve the Lord in whatever circumstance you find yourself in. Yesterday, it's gone. With its joys and, and with its sorrows, its successes and its failures, it's today that matters right now. Hear his call. Fix your eyes on him and press on with your life of faith. So in pressing on then, secondly, hold true to what you have attained, verses 15 and 16. Let me read them. That those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Many Many years ago, I, I used to compete in the, the Scouts Athletic Days. Um, I was a decent sprinter back in the day. I know you wouldn't believe it now, but I was. And I was always entered for the 100 metres. Well, it was actually the 100 yards. That's how, that's how old I am. So there you are, all lined up. 
in your lane with your lanes in front of you awaiting the starter's gun and you did have a gun and the one rule that you had was that you had to stay in lane and I have to say you know being as humble as I possibly can that that by staying in lane and by running hard I won a fair few races and I've still got the certificates at home to prove it and Paul I think here in this text is encouraging us to keep going by staying in lane staying true to what we already know of Jesus what we have attained in him using our knowledge of him and persevering in that knowledge in the race of faith he says, only let us hold true to what we have attained. He said, hold true as we press on. We hold on to what we have in Christ as we press on. We rejoice in what we have in Christ as we press on. We stay true to the lines of truth that have been drawn for us as we press on. We stay true to who we are and what we believe as we press on. We stay true to our calling a life of love and service to the one who first loved and served us as we press on. So in pressing on, hold true to what you have already attained. Thirdly then, do as others have done, verse 17. Philippians 3, verse 17. We did a series on this way back in the day, a couple of months ago, I think. Brothers, join in imitating me. And keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Do you know, Paul was unashamedly able to say, look at my Christian life and follow me. His life was an example for others, for others to follow. And he, in ter- as he in turn endeavoured to, f- to imitate Jesus, we, we know that from 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 his life and obviously from what he wrote in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 he said there be imitators of me as I am of Christ do you know this verse um, and a number of verses similar to it they always challenge me what 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 would I want others to imitate my walk with the Lord Do I set a a good enough example to my family, friends and work colleagues? Could I be so bold as to say, as Paul did, look at me, do as I've done. Hearing Paul say those words encourages me to press on, to be an even better example to others. It might be the case that I haven't been a a great example in in the past and, and I've made mistakes like we all have, but the past is the past, isn't it? It's gone. The future can be different. We strain forward, don't we? I know the areas in my life, as you do, that need challenging, that need changing. So I will press on, looking to the example of others, looking to the example of those who've gone before, and ultimately, of course, looking to the example of Jesus. One thing I like to do is is read biographies about the lives of other Christians and um, I find them a, a great help and they spare me on. This is the latest biography. Can you get that, Brian? You got it? Um, C.H. Spurgeon. This is one by Arnold Dallimore. Really, really good. And, and when you read the lives of men and, and women like like Spurgeon, how, how they fought the good fight, how they how they kept going, you know, warts and all, because the biographies often include the down days in their lives as well, just like we have. And, and it's, it's great just to learn from these people and see that they, they kept going, they pressed on. So as you press on, do as others have done, the good examples that is, <laughs> and ultimately seek to, to imitate the one that we follow, and that is... Jesus. Fourthly then, focus your mind, verses 18 and 19. Let me read it. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. Paul wept for the lost 
It moved him to tears knowing that they walked, these people, as enemies of the cross of Christ. This is why he was driven to preach the good news to the lost. His heart's desire was that they would be saved. The lost were, were a people whose bodies and minds were, were given over to evil. And he, and he was moved to preach the good news, to take the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. When I think back to my own life before I became a Christian, my mind, like, like those that Paul writes about, was set on earthly things. My days were, were consumed with myself and with what I liked and what I wanted to do, you know, the footy, TV. If I had had a phone back in the day, I'm sure I would have, I'm sure I would have been consumed with that as well. Friends, you know, me mates, career, money. My mind w was given over to what is only ever temporary. I, I was, as Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, I was chasing after the wind, but I didn't know it. I was blind. But as a Christian, though, when I became a Christian at the age of 21, my mind had been opened to see that earthly things are not enough, that they're only ever temporary. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 as we look, says Paul, not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Paul also writes in Colossians, Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. As Christians, we're to press on by setting our minds on the things above. We're to fix our gaze upon Jesus. We're to think often of him and we're to think often of his truth and his word. The truth that, that sets us free from the shackles of, the, of, of earthly thinking and earthly living and worldly living. Philippians 4 verse 8 says this. Finally, brother, says Paul, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. In other words, Paul says, set your mind on these things. And all of these things, you know, the purity, loveliness, com commendability, excellence, on honour, justice, truth, they're all found in Jesus, aren't they? So fix your minds on him and his character. Get to know his character. Be, be like him, imitate him and press on. Focus your mind on him, not on the things of the world. Finally then, fifthly in pressing on, remember your identity and be ready for your king, verse 20 and 21. But our citizenship, says Paul, is in heaven and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. Have you ever been homesick? A few years ago, I went to the States to, to a conference, a Christian conference, and I was there for 10 days. And, and after a few days, I began to get a little bit homesick. Um, I was with Phil Wright, so no wonder I was getting a bit homesick. <laughs> anyway, America was, was nice, but um, it wasn't my home. It was not where I belonged. See, as much as you may, may love your home here on earth, and, and I know I love my home and my family and all that. But you have to remember, ultimately, that you're a citizen of a different kingdom. You're a citizen of heaven. And you're headed for your forever home. We often use that terminology, don't we? 
In these days you're forever home. But you know, as a Christian, you're forever home is with the Lord in the glories of heaven. Back to the text. But our citizenship, says Paul in verse 20, is in heaven. And from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus as your Lord and saviour, then on your eternal passport is stamped citizen of heaven. You were given a new identity the moment you came to faith in him. So you press on towards your heavenly home and the calling towards him. From which day, from, oh, sorry, from, from which one day, I'll get my words right in a minute, he will come again. Heaven himself will reveal, heaven itself will reveal the Saviour one day. So as you press on, always be ready for that day. I often say that, don't we? We should always have one eye for today, as Luther said, and, and one eye for that day on our calendars. To be in today, but also always be mindful of that day. Every day, you see, we should be living in, in, in a state of readiness for that great and glorious and awesome day when the trumpet will sound. I could have gone to lots of texts, but I'll go to Paul. I'll, I'll stay consistent. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 17, Paul writes, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a day. So press on, Christian. Don't look back. Look ahead. Today is the day you are to love him and to serve him. Maybe today is the day you come back to him. In pressing on, hold true to what you've already attained, which is what we learned secondly. Live in the knowledge of that you have of your Lord and Saviour and press on to increase in knowledge of him. Press on, thirdly, to do as others have done before you those who sought to be imitators of Christ. Press on with your mind fixed upon the King, the King of heaven, not on earthly things. Press on as a citizen of heaven and always be ready for his return. Should we pray? Let's pray. Lord, as we face the, the days and the weeks ahead, it may be that you come again, and that will be wonderful. Um, Lord, but if you should tarry, if you should delay, then in the meantime, Lord, help us, help us to learn to, to keep pressing on, to strain, strain forward, and, and to forget what lies behind, and to, to look up and respond to our calling in you. Inspire us, Lord, to live a life of faith, inspire us to imitate you and then for others to want to de desire to imitate us because we reflect you, O oh Lord. This is our desire. So we don't know what the weeks and the months ahead hold for us all. But we do know, Lord, that you want us to press on. So help us all to do that. And Father, if there's anyone who's listening this morning who as yet has not made the initial step of responding to you in faith by bowing their knee in repentance and faith. Lord, would you prompt them even now as they listen to this prayer to seek forgiveness from you, to repent of their sins and to turn to you in faith and to press on with their new found faith. Lord, hear our cry, we pray this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm so glad you joined us this morning. Um, I'll be back again tonight. I'll be looking at a passage from the Book of Romans tonight. Um, very interesting passage. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I want you to come 
and listen. Um, but it will help you to press on in your faith. And for those of you who haven't turned up at the prayer meeting yet on a, on a Wednesday, do you know what? It's a real blessing. And, you know, we have a time around the word and then we split off into, into, into little groups in, in little rooms in Zoom. And we have a real good time of fellowship. And it would be wonderful to see some new faces. And even if you're not part of Bethel and you want to join in, if you, if you, if you get me email with the links, then, then you're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you along uh, and join in fellowship with you if, you if you don't join with anyone else. So that would be great. If you're not getting the emails, then... Um, then uh, what's the email, Bri? At the moment, it's Bethel Sec. Back to that one. Bethelsech at btinternet.com. See, Brian, see, Brian's great, isn't he? What I don't know, he always knows. So Bethelsech at btinternet.com. If you want the emails, then, then, then we'll, we'll get that to you with the links for the Zoom meeting on Wednesday. But it'll be really good to see you there. So if you don't see you tonight, which I hope to, I'll see you there on Wednesday as you press on. God bless.